New York. And my gamer tag is Noel fucking world. <laughs> Oh, my phone, my, um, <laughs> Ives, he Ives, Washington Heights, New York, of course. Um, my gamer tag is Jago. my real name is Andre Lambert, I'm 24, <coughs> and I'm from Brooklyn. Christian Ellis, the gamer tag is Chris Matrix, Bronx, New York. Well, from New York, all right, well, basically, um, I came on the scene in 2003. Uh, Justin had just beaten Roe at EVO 2K3, so... He became a, a world champion for another year. Uh, after that, pretty much everybody was hungry. New people started coming on the scene. Um, you know, units started coming up, like the Syndicate, that's my unit. Dead Cell, that's Yipes. And a lot of, you know, inner city little rivalries came up. It was always New York versus Philly. But locally, we were always against each other. So we, like, drove through that competition, and that's how everybody got so good. We had what we call crack sessions that's you know we get together we play marvel we call it crack we had crack sessions in the bronx manhattan at dykeman at his crib um queens and josh wigfall's crib he's old school shout out to him and even a bk so we travel a lot hit all spots everybody get together except they game up friday night at chinatown fair that's when all the hype began a lot of money matches grudges people challenging each other and basically we had each other's thoughts, but it's all out of love, and that's where all the hype came from. You know, you gotta play with people in your ear talking all types of shit, but you gotta take that, you gotta play through that. And then we had Justin Wong and Sanford, you know, the, the, the top two dogs in the, in the scene on the East Coast, and them always going at it. Sanford was trying to be Justin, they finally did get him. So it's just a whole lot of competition over here on the East Coast. And, you know, for the better, for the worse, because in a way, it, it might have hurt us from stopped our progress, but then, you know, when we did get together, it definitely helped us elevate above the competition. Well, Philly wasn't really that big. It was only like a handful of people. So New York had the more, the more players, and obviously we played the most. But pretty much Philly style is like they're more turtly. You know what I'm saying? We kind of play like that too, but we rushed down. So probably that's what probably hindered their progress because they were so turtly in the defensive. So. Well, honestly, we only we only we only started rushing down because he came on the scene. He revolutionized rush, rush down. We were playing label shit, but um, yeah, pretty much. When I was watching from the outside, I like watching guys like you know, like the Syndicate and stuff like that, and some West Coast guys. There was, you know, they set up, they set the tone for certain things, like things that came up, like fly combos and mix ups and stuff. And it was stale for a minute. It stayed that way. So I guess when I came on the scene, I kind of figured like I was a big fan of basketball, so. It's kind of like the same element that comes in a crossover, so street ball anyway. So I took that element and I could kind of actually added it to my game. If you want to go from the beginning, beginning, because I came on the scene a little late, Raheem was the original manager of the East Coast. <laughs> All right. I came on the scene. He had to chop that job in half now. I had to rep the New York management. He got the Philly management. When we got together, there was a lot of slimy stuff going on, if you want to put it in Philly. Was, all right? But, yeah, he, he was there from the beginning, so. I give him his props. But yeah, but in terms of East Coast hype, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this: Marvel was really the, was the set the tone for, for the hype. Yeah, it's, it's it more, was real. It was real golf clappy for other games. So it, yeah, Marvel. because see, the thing was, we had a, a crowd like us playing a game like Marvel. So like, there's hype in, in other games. All the hype that that originated from Marvel. A lot of sayings, slogans, a lot of stuff. Underground came from in the Bronx, the Lawrence Lawrence Carr. Shout out to him. From his house alone, when we had about 10 to 15 minute crack sessions, people come from Chinatown Fair at the end of the night to go to Lawrence's house and play some more crack. And a lot of different sayings came from there. So the group of people that we have playing an exciting, fast paced, like edge of your seat type of game like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, that's, that definitely aids in all the hype. There's a lot of hype that you've heard for, but being at the same Marvel players and not in it the same way, you know, the, the hype is not as much as it was with Marvel, but, you know. Well, I think, I think the community is getting a lot younger because the games are, like, very more towards the children. <clears throat> so I think, like, anybody can play. It's, like, it doesn't matter who it is. Like, I see a lot of girls entering tournaments back then. You see, like, what, two girls entering, like, Marvel tournaments. No girls entering, like, CBS 2 tournaments, like, games like that. Now that games are more simpler. It's, like, I feel like... Females and then just like kids in general just feel like, oh, like I have a better chance because like I can actually execute. Where like as those games before, I couldn't do the inputs because they were harder. Um, so I feel like the, the community is getting younger. And they're like, because they're so young, there's like they're intimidated by like the hype. So they're like, they're like less hype than us. 
they see us go crazy, like they get nervous or whatever. Like, so. sure. East Coast tournaments are always the best. They're always the most hate. For me, that's just my personal preference too. Like when I go to West Coast, I was West Coast for like a month, for like a month last month. And uh, they were like, I was getting hyped and they were getting upset at me. They were getting mad because they're like, oh, why are you talking shit? And I'm like, that's what we do. Like, they're not used to that. So like my personal preference, I just like, I like hype. But that's just the environment I grew up around, so. I guess I'm always gonna be East Coast. Like, I'm not gonna lie, New York picks top tier. I, I personally don't like any of the top tier characters, so I just play big because I like that character. All right, this is an, sorry to cut him off, but he's calling it. He's calling Vice a top tier. I mean, I don't agree, but I think he's, he's solid. But you know, it's whatever. I mean, I I play other characters, but I mean, mostly every character I play in a video game has to fit a certain description. So. Well, I pick Vice because he looks cool and he, he rushes down. There you go. So he reminds me, he, he kind of reminds me of Magneto, so I kind of play him. And he's got the purple. Yeah. I, <laughs> he's I, got the purple. It's my color. Right? I don't really, really play, but I actually started playing with Akuma. I actually play Akuma. I picked up Vice because I like the way they use the character and I like Vice's swag. So I was like, you know, I want to add him to my rubber. So they said I need another character, so I said, why not Vice? So, you know, I can figure out, I can learn from them anyway. So I just, I just like the way the character looks. Yeah, this game sort of compresses styles. Oh. So, um, who, you, who do you think is um, better right now, or maybe even over time, East Coast or West Coast? Well, as time, I mean, damn, that's a good question. Um, um, it's like a handful of us that are right there with West Coast. The it always goes back and forth. Like, yeah. When I'm going by Marvel's standpoint, like West Coast was really strong at one point, and then we got huddled up and then we kind of took over. Right. It goes kind of back and forth on, on that end of Marvel. On Street Fighter, we, East Coast had it in Manila in terms of all the players that we had, mm -hmm. but like now different fractions moved out. Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? So you're now right. they're in the West Coast. I don't really know. I, I, I can tell you this, in West Coast, they'll help each other more in terms of learning their matchups and stuff like that. But over here, it's a little, you know, too many groups and stuff. We're not really getting together to play yeah. and learn from each other. So that's in that, in, in that, in that sense, yeah. I think West Coast is better. I think that's for, for, for now anyway. Like the lifestyle. Yeah. As far as it goes, like me being on both, like I travel to both, like on a fluent mm. basis. Uh, East Coast was definitely better. I'm not gonna compare. I'm not gonna involve Justin in this because he's on a on a different level. He's on a different plateau. So you can't you not including Justin on either coast. And Vanilla East Coast was better because just because we were more united during Vanilla. Because Chinatown Fair is the only arcade when it first came out. That was the only arcade that had it. So everybody had no choice but to go there and play with each other. It's like, once it came out on console, you know, like whatever, and then Vanilla, I mean, and then Super came out shortly afterwards, probably within the, the next couple of months, that's when everybody broke off into their factions. Like, these people, oh, I don't want to go to Chinatown, I don't want to pay money when I can just play in my house for free, things like that. West Coast, when I went over there, I was there for a month, I say I played a different person at least at least six out of the seven days of, of the week, every time I was there, there was always someone new at the house. Hey, you wanna play, you wanna play, you wanna play? Like, that never happens here. You always have, oh, what's up, what's up? Uh, like, I play with this guy named Bum. It's like, oh, what's up, Bum, you wanna play? Oh, who else we playing with? Just me and you. That's it. Like, you don't never get any new, any, any new competition, any new players. Like, what's the name? That's why you see the same people always losing to the same characters, things like that. Because they, they can't learn matchups because they're playing, they're playing their friends. Their friends don't play every character in the game. Is this true? That's true. Yeah, that, was a, that was a big job. I mean, only reason I went to Marvel, to be very honest, my computer died. So then I just needed something new to play, and then so happens I got stuck in playing that game. And I watched like a, a video from uh, Midwest Championships from Combo Fiend, Peter Roses. Yeah. And I see something so cool that he did, and I was like, yeah, I got to learn this. And then from that, I just got hooked. I know, like, Andre, you played, like, uh, like other fighting games before you played, like, Street Fighter, right? Like, yeah. Fighter. I came from first-person shooters, mm -hmm. and then, like, Counter-Strike, console, Perfect Dark. And then I was just, one day, I just played Mars Capcom 1, and I thought doing a Raging Demon was kind of cool. <laughs> so <laughs> I started playing it, and, and then Marvel vs. Capcom 2 came out, and I started playing that. And then my friend told me, who's actually here, he was just like, Everybody thinks they're really good. And I take you to Chinatown Fair and I bet you you'll get beat. And I went, and that's when I met Justin. And then that's how I got into this whole scene. I started, well, I started just playing everything, whatever my brothers had, because I love my old brothers. Like, we just always play games, whatever. But the real game I started playing competitively was uh, Super Smash Brothers for GameCube. 
Like, because I thought I was the best in the world. I was like, nobody can beat me. Everybody's house, every little kid's house I went to when I played, I'm like, yo, you suck. I fucked you up. You suck. Whatever. And then uh, my friend was like, oh, you know they're throwing a tournament down here or whatever. This place called Neutral Ground that we used to have tournaments at. So I went downtown, and I, and I have this championship belt on. I'm like, because I was into wrestling back then. I go down there with my belt, and I'm like, oh, I got, I'm the champion. I'm going to win this tournament or whatever. I went, I went three of my other friends, right? And I play a casual game with, with this random guy, right? Uh, his name is uh, Papa D, right? That's his gamer tag, right? And uh, he's like, hey, take it easy on me because I'm just trying to learn this character, right? So I play Link, and I'm like, oh, this wow. Link is the best character in the game to me because nobody else can beat my Link, right? So he picks Marth. At that time, I didn't know Marth was the best character in the game, right? So he's like, take it easy. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Uh, and that game, you have four lives. At the end of that round, he still had four lives, and I had zero. And I was like, oh, all right, maybe I'm playing. Well, I'm not, you know, this is my first match. The next game we played, he still had four lives, and I didn't enter that tournament. I left. <laughs> and then I went home, and I went on YouTube, and I started watching videos, and I actually learned how to wave dash and all of that. So then I, that's when I actually got good at the game, and then I started, you know, traveling more to tournaments and whatever, and placing higher and higher and higher. But, and then... Uh, that, I actually met Justin through Super Smash Brothers. He didn't play, but uh, he just went to tournaments, like just be there because they would have like other tournaments there too, like for Marvel and CBS too, like that. And that's how I got into the other fight games team because I got tired of little kids. And then like I saw like the other games, like Third Strike was more of like an adult mm -hmm. game, and I was always hyped. Like I am always hyped. So Super Smash Brothers, they don't get hyped. They they get mad too. They, yeah. get, they get mad when you get hyped. So I'm like, oh, I want to get hyped. So I'm gonna play another game. And that's how I transitioned. <laughs> well, I was just your average, everyday commercial gamer. A new game come out, you know, I buy it, play on my little controller. I, I knew nothing about a fighting game community or a scene, nothing like that. And, you know, one day after school, I was playing this arcade. I was playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This is the game I was playing. And I had a really, really shitty scene, like a Kuma, Gala, and Strider. I played this guy, he told me, that's not a good team. Yeah, that's the same thing. I was like, fuck out of here, what are you talking about? He bought me. I said, wow, he said, listen, in Chinatown, I'm nothing. So I said, Chinatown, I've never been here either. So he took me to Chinatown, and the first thing I see is Sanford Kelly, and I didn't know Sanford Kelly, he's going nuts, like, ah, going, going crazy, making all type of noise, and so I'm like, what's going on? I look at the screen, I see characters whipping around, doing all type of shit. A lot of combos on the screen and everything. I'm like, wow, this is a whole nother world. I met Desmond and Lawrence. You know, they told me like, yeah, you know, this whole nother world, it's not your everyday fighting scene. They put me on an SRK. You know, I started learning the game more. I met, met Justin Wong. I found out that, you know, people actually hold tournaments in different states and a lot of traveling involved. I said, wow, this is a whole nother type of life. And I really like Marvel. I like the game. So, you know, I started playing more and more and more. And, getting my ass whooped a lot, mm -hmm. and I mean a lot, and still getting it whooped, you know, eventually I got better. I'm definitely the top player to contend with anybody. So, you know, I got better there, and Sandra Kelly's a close friend of mine, and uh, I, he was part of this group called Parcadia. I spoke to Triforce, and, uh, you know, I liked what he had to say. I liked the direction that he was trying to go in with the game, because I like games. So I joined the group, and, you know, just up until now, just playing, playing, playing. Just getting more involved with the scene and you know made a name for myself and here I am. I ain't take it serious until I got second in my first Evo. I went to Evo 2K5 and like I got second. I beat Justin the first time then. And once I saw that how the crowd reacted and everything, that's when I like really took it serious. Like I went out there, you know, I was like, hey, let me just enter. It's just Vegas. I went there with the Vegas mentality. Like, yeah, it's Vegas. So I just want to go there and chill. But what sucked about it is I was like underage at that time, so I couldn't enjoy it. But uh yeah, I got second, and that's just when everything changed from that. So I started taking it seriously when my first major tournament, I came third, and I managed to beat a Toro. Not in any game that any of you play, of course. Okay. Yes. Don't course. say it. Yeah, don't say that. I really don't like that game. game. You, you can't say it. They killed my scene. <laughs> yeah, they actually single handedly killed my scene. Yeah, what about him? Oh no, they can't kill us. Marvel just coming out too much. <laughs> so, so that's the shelf life. Yeah, so, you're not gonna be playing that game. <laughs> I like Arcade. <laughs> be honest, what you gonna be playing, Arcade or Marvel? Both. Both. Yeah, exactly. Both. All right, they gonna play both.
Are you gonna play with me? Yeah, of course. I'm a god in that game. Well, rivalries are created to to increase hype, no matter what. It's, if somebody loses to somebody else, they're gonna make a rivalry out of it. Like how JS Master just beat Justin. Now all of a sudden, JS Master best bar in the world. Even like he beat one person, and he becomes the best bar in the world. Like, come on, seriously? You know, like they're gonna make rivalries. Like I'm pretty sure the next time Wolf Chrome plays <laughs> Puerto Rican bar rock, it's oh, we're all just a big rivalry. We did. Like it's just it's all created to make hype. That's that's the only reason rivalries are even created. Well, personal rivalries. <laughs> well, a little different because some people just don't. The Sanford and Justin rivalry yeah. is completely different. You. Some people don't want to lose to people that they feel they're better than. Them. So it doesn't, you know, it might be fun, but deep down inside, you're gonna be very salty if you lose to somebody that you think sucks. So no, that's right. when that type of stuff happens. Or mm-hmm. Justin, like, no, just fine. At least it's shown. Oh yeah, Josh was going on um, about his. What's uh, Josh? Josh, 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 Josh. Okay, about his uh, ten thousand to one. Uh, uh, for, oh, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle beating Kyle. Um, yeah, now it's the tier list of bullshit. It should be like nine Yeah, that's what it says. I mean, the tier lists are just you know. Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of facts with it, but Josh overall, it's it's opinionated, you know. But I guess since the, the Japanese are technically the best in the game, they have the most say or credibility. What? It doesn't mean what they say is etched in stone. It's just that, you know, they probably have mm-hmm. they probably are known for having the the best and most accurate opinions on it. So I, you know, I don't I don't think they have the best opinions. No, I said they're known they're, for it. I don't say they do either. I don't think they're known for it either. I had actually thought about I knew I was in school, so I had thought about but I was gonna do a night before, so once once I was playing him, I had already got it out of my head that I was just gonna execute what my plan was to do to to win the match. So I already knew that he probably had it coming. That's what was going through my head. He played more than likely he had did it coming. Did you study how he played? No, did I didn't study how he played. I just knew what you wanted. I just know how he can shut off his options, and I did that to him. So. I close his options off, and I know he can't fight without those options. The only reason that we we're on the same level as them because we started at the same time. Like you know, they usually get stuff in arcade before us and things like that. Like we started at the same exact time. Like once we started at the same time, we all learned from each other. Like they can look at our videos, we can look at their videos. We're all learning at the same pace. You know, they're not. You know, oh, the game came out. You know, in December here, but you guys get it in March. You know, like they're already like really far ahead of us. That's not fair. And this is like the first game where we started at the same time. But I really don't know the big difference when it comes to Japan and America. No, no. Well, the difference is it's it's the the type of practice that they have and their mentality. I don't know if they're like real Zen like out there. Or something. They, no, they, you know, they, they play. Diligence. Yeah, they're they, they they more disciplined. You know, they they don't just run to a counter or an advantage. You know, they tr- learn as much as they can about something first. So we don't do that over here. We'll just. Most, some people do, right and then like you know, some people under will just see what's working and then try to jump on it. They don't understand why they're making the same moves, but they'll just say, "Okay, well, I just see this is working." The, the competition is a is a double edged sword. Well, yeah, it it drives us to be very competitive and work hard, but at the same time, it hurts us because we don't get to learn as much as we can. Sometimes before you know, you got to empty your cup. This, this is why the Marvel, stuff in this why the Marvel community is real big. Well, yeah, it's, it's America. <laughs> it's the hustle mentality. So I really appreciate that. But, 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 we, we, but we, are, uh, we are going to change that, uh, at least a small group of us, when Marvel 3 comes out. So, I mean, West Coast right now, they're on top of the game with, with Marvel 2. Now, so we, we slacked off a little bit, but Marvel 3, it's not happening. Marvel 2, they're better than us? No, they're, they're on top right now. No, they're not. They're he on top right now. I won season. Okay, you won, but they're, they're still on overall. That's one tournament. What do you mean one tournament? He came out of retirement on the last oh, major. Oh, oh, yeah. He came third. Two people don't cut it. Just, Two people uh, don't cut it. They went to the big stuff. I know you guys got to go. What have you guys been doing to prepare for the coin toss tournament? Me? Yeah, Aaron, I'm a he, he, Well, he's the champ. He's, so the, cha- he's the champ. He was the champ uh, at Summer Jam. But um, I got third. Yeah, he got. So we, we got. We got top. I was in winners finals. We got. We got top I players got in the business right now. So there's some real tough competition out um, there, like Noel Brown. I'm just watching out for. Him. All I'm saying is, if him or him runs into me, I'm gonna pop his head off. That's it. 
uh, you know, I gotta go in there with the smart stuff. <laughs> gotta be. I've been eating my vitamins. I've been drinking my milk. You know, so I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident. I'm making sure I'm not nervous. My ability to choose. I can the right. see the coin flip. You know, like like real, real motion. slow. Yeah, <laughs> slow motion. I gotta watch out for this. Carrots. His carrots. reactions. <laughs> <laughs> Plays Call of Duty. I train my mind to be so sharp that I can will what I want the coin to be. So if I call, it's over. Oh, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> okay. This is getting out of hand. All right, we'll end it on that. Thanks. All right, thank you.